Welcome to Weapons Education. Tom here, and I have a lot of firepower on the table. Let's talk about what gun is your favorite. Now, I don't have the end-all answer here. I just pulled out a couple of guns here, a lot of firepower. And I'm going to show you some of my favorites. These are not all of my favorites. This is not the end-all answer, but these are some of my favorites. And I would like everybody to jump into the forum. As the channel, channel grows and evolves, I think the best thing for all of us to do is to go into the comment section and discuss with each other what you like about each gun I'm about to show you. So I'm going to throw some firepower at you and discuss it. And before I do that, I want to answer this one question I get all the time. The question is, hey Tom, why do you have so many guns? <laughs> why? Now, I want to thank my wife. Say hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Why do you have so many shoes? This why. Me? Is it a girl uh, thing or what's the deal? Um, I just like collecting them, I guess. You collecting them? Have, what's sure. your favorite shoe line? Um, I have quite a Speak few. Up. I probably Christian Louboutin. That's one of them. What? It's a shoe. It's, one it's of a my shoe. Shoes. Yes. Yeah, a Christian Louboutin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So <laughs> girls got their thing. What else do you collect, by the way? Do you like handbags? Sure, I have Girls plenty like of that match, yeah. yeah what would you say? I have plenty. <laughs> you have plenty. Anything else you collect? Well, that, that's that's probably the big items, the expensive well, items. But well, not money thing. Just what else you collect? Hmm? Pets? Yeah. Well, we have some pets, too. <laughs> okay. So you like, you like to collect. The point is, we like to collect things. My passion is firearms, knives, personal protection, bringing education to the channel. Let's all do this together as fun and have education part of it and also have the forum and the comment section as a huge part of the channel. So what I'm about to show you is some of my favorites. Not, they're not all of my favorites. It's impossible to do. Some of my favorites. Here's a lot of firepower. Let's start with the make. Zoom in on that please. Thank you. Real close. This is a beautiful firearm. Oh, this HK USP 45 compact. Let me show you both sides. You got a nice look at that. Oh, my first HK. I got a bunch of HKs. We'll we'll be doing a lot of reviews on these. Now these are pricey. Now there's a reason why they're pricey is because, first of all, they're super high quality. It's German quality. Well, we're not going to get into that now. I'll do a whole separate vi video on on German quality. But when I got my first HK about oh, 15 years ago, I've been collecting guns for 25 years, but when I got my first HK, that was it for me. That, that's it. I just had to keep going with it. So this is an option. If you like 45 ACP, it's, it's carried by military and law enforcement all across the world. Super high quality. The first manufacturer ever to make a polymer gun. People think it's Glock. Um, Glock that makes a wonderful polymer gun. But HK was the first, super high quality, pricey, thousand, twelve hundred dollars approximately, even more. But I do highly recommend an HK. So I want your feedback as to all the power I'm about to show you. What do you like? What do you dislike? And that's what this is all about. All of us getting together in a forum and talking. Now, let's talk about 1911s for a minute. It's pretty hard to just say this is not my favorite 1911 that I own. There's other great 1911s, of course. You can say they're better, you know, you can Nighthawk or um, Wilson Combat. But take a really good, nice, close look at that, please. Can you really zoom in on the autograph of Ed Brown? This is sweet. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of breakdowns on this and cleaning of it. Putting out a lot of videos. But this is my favorite 1911 in my arsenal. Okay, which is, yeah, it's understandable. Most people... It's not in their budget, which is okay. This is not any other type of thing except showing you some cool guns. Now, here's some 1911s to give you some options. Uh, modern day 2011. What a beautiful Smith E series. Look at the scalloping. Look at the wood grips. The scandium frame. Oh. They say this can swim away. It's got so much scalloping on it. Even the top of the slide. Zoom in on that, please. Scalloped. This is, 
this video is just basically some of the guns I recommend. I just, I just love and adore. I love them all. I wouldn't buy a gun unless I checked out all the specs and I really researched it. But these are some of my favorites. Okay? Now, staying on 19 11s, how about a Colt Railgun? Let's switch this around. Zoom in right there, please, on that 100 years in service. I'll tell you what I like about the gun. I love it that it's a Colt. It's super high quality. Uh, the tolerance is, is not nearly as tight as the Smith E-Series, or of course the tolerances are the tightest on the Ed Brown, but that's, that's a different story. For the money, this Colt rail gun's a good deal. I do not like the fact, if you zoom in on the top of the slide please, that it scratches so easy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send two Colts back next week. I'll show you the next 1911 I'm going to send back. I'm going to send this one back to get refurbished, even though I've only shot it four times, it's got about 400 rounds through it. Take a nice look at it. It's a wonderful gun. It's never jammed or had a hiccup, but I just, I'm, I'm just annoyed that it scratches so easily. So I'm going to send this back along with my 30-year-old, almost 30, 28-year-old. Look at this. Is this my favorite 1911? I think so, possibly, because the 10 millimeter. The 10mm is my favorite round. There's no secret about that. I've been talking about it since day one. The knockdown power, the velocity, it is just amazing. And I did a video called the, uh, the birth of the 40 caliber and it all goes back to the uh, Miami shootout. I'm going to do that video over again because it's too important to, to, to bring to your attention. But the 10mm is a very special round and it's basically a 40 caliber on steroids. So, uh, yeah, this Colt, Colt Delta Elite government model, you got a good look at that? People love this gun. All my friends love this gun. Give them a good look at that. I love it. Oh, God, I just don't want to let it out of my hands. Which gun do you like the best? Let's just, let's just open up the discussion. Which would you buy? I'm trying to give you options. Here's another 1911. Now, this is brand new for 2011. The SIG, SIG Sauer. Uh, by the way, SIG, is it a German company? Is it a Swiss company? What is it? It's both. I'll, that's another video I want to revamp and, and do over again because people don't realize the true story about SIG Sauer. This is quality stuff. SIG Arms is from the United States, and, but SIG Sauer goes way back, and I'm not going to tell the whole story now. Uh, the bottom line is SIG is from uh, Switzerland and Sauer is from Germany and the Swiss government said back, I don't know, about 40 years ago or so, we have to, uh, we, ha we, we recommend that all of our gun manufacturers partner up with other countries. And to make a long story short, Mr. Sig partnered up with Mr. Sauer and here we have Sig Sauer. Oh boy, I think my two favorite 19, uh, uh, let's see, it's impossible to do. Is it the Ed Brown? Is it the SIG? Is it the Colt? Delta Elite 10 millimeter? Is it the Smith? Which I've been shooting the heck out of in the last two weeks, by the way. We'll talk about this in detail. This thing is sweet with that Scandium frame. Modern day firearms are just awesome. There's, I'm just giving you options. This is just an all, all around discussion about options and your feedback. Now for carry, I'm a small barrel guy. I do like, I call it the power punch, no matter whether it's a Glock or a Colt. Or, I just like the small barrel. I like to have the 45 ACP or preferably a 10 millimeter in the smallest barrel possible that carries the most amount of rounds. That's just me. You know. Look how sweet this is. Please zoom in on this. This is a beautiful gun. This Ultra Raptor 2. Talk about sexy. I mean, the craftsmanship that went into this gun, this, this, look at that. Just the, look at, look at everything. Just look at, look at it all. Look at the scalloping on the front, the top. It's just, it's just beautiful. Okay. Got the beaver tail. 
All right, I carry this a lot. Now, let's talk about some other things. What is my favorite Glock? Okay, no secret. I love all Glocks. I have a bunch of them, probably 25, maybe 20, 25. The 29 is my favorite model. It's reliable. You can just jam it with dirt and still shoot it, and it's going to always be there for you. It's my little, uh, it's my little power punch, most powerful Glock made. Just giving everybody options and things to think about. This is inexpensive. In today's marketplace, I, you know, I hate to quote prices and things like that. I know times are tough, but for five hundred dollars to get a gun that's not going to malfunction, that's going to pretty much always work, and that's going to shoot a ten millimeter and that's small and compact and you can put the larger magazine in from the 20 and hold, I don't know, it's about 15 rounds. Oh man, this, this, is, this is my baby. This is my Glock baby, the 29. That's my favorite 29. Give me your opinion on what, what is your favorite Glock? What is your favorite 1911? What is your favorite everything I'm speaking about here? What, let's look at something else here. What about this? Let's talk about Glock. Springfield, okay. This is a big Springfield, 4.5 inch. Woohoo! XDM. This has to be one of my favorite polymer guns made, um, along with HK. As far as polymer quality, I have to give these two in the top five of polymer guns because you have to look at the gauge, the thickness of the polymer, and everything that the gun comes with for the price. Yeah, they're a little bit more pricey than the Glock, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. You leave that up to yourself. You just have to do the specs and, and study it. I'm trying to give you education. That's what this channel is all about, is to try to give you ideas and education as to which gun you should purchase next and which would suit your situation the best. Whether you're law enforcement, whether it's for personal protection at your home, uh, next to your nightstand, maybe it's for your concealed carry, which one would it be? I'm trying to give you options. This, this Springfield XDM is awesome. Awesome. Zoom in on that, okay? Now this car PM40 is pretty sweet because it has the, the, the laser, the crimson laser, right here built in. And I got a custom holster for it and all that. Da, 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 da. I love this. I carry this a lot. And it's a 40. And when you put your uh, PDX ones in there or whatever round you want to carry for personal self defense, your Ranger series, anything you want, you're pretty good to go for as far as personal protection. And this is thin. This is small. This is a good option. Which gun do you like the best? That's the topic of this video. I'm just trying to give everybody options. This is weapons education to give everybody some education and some options. My favorite, well, I have to tell you right now, this is my favorite 380, the P238. You got a nice look at that. All right. Look how beautiful this is, a little mini 1911, basically. Super easy to break down and just gorgeous. The workmanship on it, it's a SIG. Uh, pricey gun, but you know what? After you buy it, if you save up, would you rather spend $400 on a gun or maybe $600 and then for the rest of your life have a $600 gun or a $400 gun? I'm going for quality for the rest of my life. Every gun I purchase for the rest of my life is going to be quality. Um, I've, I've kind of always been that way, but I'm just saying, I know times are tough right now, but just I'm just giving you options. Beautiful wood grips, just gorgeous. When you have something like this, it's, it's just priceless. It's something that's an heirloom to your family that's going to go up in value. Whether it's a watch, whether it's, uh, I wish I had a, uh, one of those muscle cars from the 70s. You know, I see them selling them on uh, Barrett Auction, is that what it's called? And they're selling for like $150,000, these Camaros from the 70s. Boy, oh boy. I think this will be worth more money than it is now, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Similar to this, the said brown. I think it's a good investment. Okay, now, last couple of things is revolvers. These are two of my favorites, not my favorite favorites, but two of my favorites. This is um, a wonderful pocket pistol. It's a 357 Magnum. 
357. The thing is light as a feather. I think it's, I'm guessing here, 16 ounces. It's, it's pretty, it's about a pound. It's pretty light. And it's scandium frame. I did videos on the, the quality of scandium. It's, it's about uh, something like 30, 40, 50 times the price of gold. It's a super high quality frame. And Smith has scandium, the, the precious metal trademarked, to put into their frames. And that's what I like about the Smith revolvers or any Smith gun. For instance, this 1911 has a scandium frame. You can't go wrong with it. So, as far as a revolver, I do like my 37 in my pocket at all times. And it's just light as a feather. I don't know what's there. More options. My favorite. This could be my favorite revolver that I own. I have about 15, 20 of them. Zoom in on that, please. It says Performance Center. This is sweet. Now, when you hold this gun and you go like this, and you hold a lower end gun, this is expensive. This is, I don't know, thousand, twelve hundred dollars, maybe even more. I forget. The Performance Center Super High End 44 Magnum, and you hold a lower end revolver, and the cylinder vibrates, or you shake it, and it makes noise, and you can just hear it. The internal parts on the Performance Center Smith are really second to none in revolvers, in my opinion. Give me your opinion. What's your take? Which revolver would you get? I like the 44 Magnum. I like the small J frame, 357 Magnum. This is the um, model M and P 340. I'm going by memory. SC or CS, one or the other. It's uh, you can check it out. Go just go to the website. Look at all their look at all their high end performance center revolvers. Super quality. Now the last thing I want to leave you with is two things: flashlights. Uh, this I just here, have here on display. If you don't have a flashlight that's super high quality, just one, you're missing out. This is a Phoenix TK45. Phoenix and 4.7s are kind of like my two favorites. I like Sh Surefire also, of course. But uh, I do like my Phoenixes. Okay, and the last thing I want to leave you with is an Espada. <laughs> Show my face, please. Please uh, zoom in. Okay, it's warm in here. It's the middle of summer. So uh, we're outside, no air conditioning. Let me show this Espada. Now, I want to give a good, close look. Oh, gosh. Okay, now, look how big it is. When you, when you look at the box, which is right here, I could zoom down at the box. It's brand new. I got 10 of these, by the way, in stock. Uh, I'll blow them out for $350. They retail for $480. Uh, if you want one of these, just make a check out to Armory Express Outlet. Mail it to my P.O. Box. Of course, PM me. Give me your phone number. We'll discuss it. Ten dollars shipping, and you know, for three sixty, you will get this. And this, for the rest of your life, will last you the rest of your life and save your life possibly. You have a good close look at it. Uh, let me put it on here. Zoom in down here because I want to show the size of it. Okay. That's my hand. I'm six, almost six five, and that's. This thing is huge. The Revolutionary War, back in 1777, a year after we became our United States, uh, at the time we were the United States Army, and George Washington, our founding father, uh, he won the war against um, the opponent, was trying to take over all of our 13 or 14 states at the time they were invading us. He called up all of his troops in Valley Forge, which I recently went there. He had his recruiting center for six months, and what he did was they had their muskets and they had their blades, bayonets in particular. Also blades, not this of course, but blades in their hands. And the Revolutionary War in our country was basically saved by the blade, more so than the musket, because we know the musket took 15, 20 seconds to reload and all that kind of stuff. It was not accurate. It was just some big ball of lead shooting out there, hopefully hitting the opponent. And when they did, they did, and they took out the opponent. But that was the most bloodiest hand combat war, in my opinion. 
because they had no other choice. They had to use the blade. This blade, to me, in modern day 2011, is the best, the best self-protection knife on the planet. I just give me your input. I want to learn what knife this size folding that has a triad lock system basically becomes a fixed blade after it's opened up. And this sharp, and this holds like this, or like this, or like this, or, or like this. You can hold this four or five different ways. I purposely do not do any fancy movements with my blades because I do not want anybody to copy me and hurt themselves because this is so sharp if you cut your hand like here or something it's like game over so I don't want you playing with these things these are only deployed when you would pull a firearm out that's how deadly they are so it's not something to play with anyway alright so we got the blades if you want but this is not talking about sales the last thing I want to say is this please zoom in on this uh, and my face uh, I'm going to be doing some traveling, as I promised. I'm going back to Pennsylvania the middle of September. I'm going to Philadelphia, the land of the liberty. I'll be doing more work and more work and more work with the NRA to fight gun laws. I really do not believe I would be holding this SIG 1911 in my hand or any of the guns I just showed you if it were not for the NRA. In the last 24 months in particular, the NRA has made major strides in helping your states with gun laws. The Castle Doctrine, I spoke about it. Think of it. Did you have it a year ago, two years ago, four years ago? But I know you didn't have it after or prior to 2005 because it was, it was non-existent. The NRA made it all happen. Please, please, there's a link on my channel. You get $10 off. Please PM me if you join. It means a lot to me personally because I have radio shows lined up. I want to. I like my guns. I love my guns. I want to protect them. You love your guns. We want to protect our families. Please join the NRA. Please click that link. Spend the twenty-five dollars. It's normally thirty-five. And please sign up. PM me if you put your phone number in. As you know, I've been calling everybody who puts their phone number in and thanking you personally. It really means a lot to me because if, if I have the NRA backing me, if I can say I got you know these 50, 60 p PMs from one video, then I could have them help me come to your state. All right? I'm going to check out. I'm sorry for the long video, but the concept of this video is of all the guns I just showed you, what's your feeling? What do you think? Isn't it cool to love these guns, these firearms? All right, checking out. See you tomorrow night.